So this is you and President Obama. Incredible. And who is this again? I, I don't remember his name. General MacArthur? What? General who? Which general is this? That is commands all five branches. General Lloyd Austin Lloyd, III. Lloyd Austin III. President Barack Obama. We have some more presidents back here, I believe. Oh, yeah. And there are two frames in front of you, the big wooden ones right there. Mm -hmm. Now, find the date on that. Let's see. This is 2010, 2007. Now, this man, Kennedy H.C. Fairborn, called me and said, I've read something that you've written. Would you come down and speak to my 70 officers of the H.C. Fairborn? And I said, I would walk to be there. He says, that won't be necessary. I flew down, had the most wonderful moment with H.C. Fairborn today. Commander of the 18th Airborne happens to command all five branches of the service. And he's my great contemporary hero, General Lloyd Austin III. Wow. Now my great hero in history is Abraham Lincoln, which will not surprise you because it's the moment when the country was torn apart. He found a line of this in the heart to bring us all back together again. So those are my two heroes. Wow. One today and... So when I got down there to speak to the AC Airborne, these were already framed, this is 2007, these were already framed and waiting. And so I was an member of the Aces Airborne for two years, 2007, 2009. Isn't that fun? It's incredible. Proud member of the Mighty Airborne Corps. So we have yes. Ronald Reagan. Yes. I see Bill Clinton. Yes. Here's another. Yes. Hillary and Bill. And then here's a here's a very So yes. is this when you were getting your presidential medal of freedom? freedom. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Messy room of the White House. And there is General Eric Shinseki, one of my. He and I were at West Point. We did a book together. He sent me the proof of the new Army training manual and on the cover B, no, do. And he said, Would you please read it? And make any changes we're ready to publish. I read it and said, I wouldn't even change a semicolon. It's perfect. In fact, it's so perfect, a book on leadership. It would be great for civilians. So he called me a couple hours later and said, if you think that would be so great for civilians, why don't you and I publish it? The Army Training Manual be no do for civilians. We did. Absolutely incredible. So you have 29 books that you've published? They're along the top. Yes. Okay, let's see. 29 books. And all sorts of different languages. 28 books and 29 languages. These are all leader to leader books or? Wow. Leader of the future, 
Drucker and Drucker and Drucker. So this is you and Peter Drucker here. Yep. And General Eric Shinseki down there. And here's a cover of Business Week. The first time they ever had a woman on the cover. First time they ever had a woman on the cover of Business Week was you? Yes, there it is. Let's see. And they held it up for six months. They were afraid to publish it because they weren't sure what men would think of a woman on the cover of Business Week with a bunch of little kids. Incredible. Six months later, they published it, and then they told me it was one of their most, the most popular cover. But there's a little girl scouts there. When was this? So this is from March, 1990. <clears throat> wow. So I see the, the Presidential Medal over here. That's it. So the Presidential Medal of Freedom is the highest honor a civilian can get in the United States. It's the highest civilian honor. JFK designed it, and that, there it is. He designed it. He said, uh, we don't have an honor for civilians the way the military does. He died. He was assassinated before he could ever present one, but LBJ was faithful wow. as he carried on. And it was 50 years old last November 22nd, and here we are. So this was the 50th anniversary. Oh, wow. Henry Kissinger, David Rockefeller, Oprah. All the living Medal of Freedom mm -hmm. yes. winners. Recipients. Isn't that sweet? Wow. The Obamas. So this is the most incredible office, potentially, in the world. Really? <laughs> yeah. No, it's just, it's just home. And so here are These all... Here are our 23 honorary doctoral degrees. We do not have an earned one. No doctorates yet. They're all yet. <laughs> honorary, and most of them came with a commencement speech, of course. So let's see. We're going to do a selfie here, Francis. Let's see if we can do some questions. This is me and Francis Hasselbein in New York City. People are from all over the world are, are hi, watching. Hi, everybody. I saw some people from Toronto before. Aren't we having fun <laughs> here? Yeah. Like, we've just had a wonderful luncheon in the employees' cafeteria. At Mutual of America, right on Park yes. Avenue in New York City. 320 Park. Anytime you're in New York, remember, drop in. A warm welcome awaits you. And she's being very true. So I, I mean, there aren't. There's six people right now. If anyone wants to share this with friends, uh, I think there's a way to easily uh, post it onto Twitter and let people know. Uh, but if anyone has a question, so there's six people watching right now. If anyone has a question for Francis Hesselbein, now would be a good time to ask it. Otherwise, I have some questions for you, Francis. Let's see. We got Victoria. She's given us a lot of hearts. All right, so I'm gonna send this video, Francis, for sure, to the alums of the student, uh, Francis Hesselbein Student Academy for Civic Engagement. Uh, and one of the things I want to ask for them 
is in this global world that we're in right now, how how do we get started being of service when there's just so much to do? How do you, and and I feel like most of the students, the 300 or so that have gone through the academy, want to change the world, and that's a massive undertaking. So how do we get started doing that? One person at a time, one organization at a time, one community at a time, then it doesn't look so overwhelming. We begin at the beginning. And long ago in the 17th century, 1600 something, Emerson wrote, be ye an opener of doors. And that's what we have to do. We open doors for all the people who can come after us. Even if we don't know them, we open doors. So we take Emerson seriously, don't we? You certainly do. Uh, and I, I, I try to. You do. <laughs> you do. The fact that you're here. Yeah. Well, thank you, Francis. And so I saw, uh, I believe there's a Victoria in here. Let's see if we can find the question. Victoria asked, uh, or Victor, I'm sorry, Victor asked, what is your greatest personal achievement? Um, you said personal achievement. Personal achievement. My greatest personal achievement was marrying the nicest guy in the world and having a little boy, a baby boy. And when my husband was combat air crew photographer in the Navy, I took a little 15-month-old baby boy to Florida so he could be with his father. And we lived off the base. And I think those moments when I made sure the two men in my life were connected and together, I love, I love the thought of that. That's personal. That's fantastic. Very personal. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you for the question, Victor. Uh, Francis, I guess one question that I have, and I've always wondered, I have a friend who was a HBS, I believe, uh, st student who had, th there's a case study on you uh, yeah. at Harvard. Yes, and I, there is. <laughs> I believe. Yes, I'm afraid there is. <laughs> I believe it had to do with uh, the Boy Scouts trying to take a motto or a, a business model from the Girl Scouts. Is that, do you remember well, that? That was two sentences. The case study is really much broader, more global. Okay. It's true as one time, uh, I don't even like to talk about it, but there, there was some thought of taking in little girls, little 10 year old girls into the Boy Scouts. And all we did was speak to some remarkable people in leadership positions who said, of course, that will never happen. And it never did. You see, the all of the things that happen to little boys and little girls growing up. They're different, but these are not easy times. So little boys deserve all kinds of organizations for them, specifically designed for little boys and girls growing up deserve their own programs designs just for girls growing up at this period in our history. Thank you, Fra Francis. You're welcome. Yeah. 
All right, so um, I think we're gonna wrap this up. Is there anything that you would like to say uh, to the people who might watch this in the future? Yes, I've loved, we've been together, Tony and I have been together for several hours. And I don't want to let him go. Oh. He has the best questions and he knows all the really good people who care about what you and I care about. So this has been a glorious few hours together and I'm so honored wherever you are. I hope it is a blessed day. Oh. And I wish you every good wish in the whole world. Love you. Well, thank you, Francis. And I'll just say in New York City, it's a blessed day because I get to spend it with you. Um, and so if you liked this video, please uh, share it and let some friends see Frances Hesselbein, her incredible office, and learn a little bit about her story. So thank you guys. Uh, until next time, be well.